We're at Mercury Yacht Harbour today down in Southampton to see the guys at TBS Boats. And the reason for that is that they've got the first of its kind in the UK, a new model of boat, which actually made its debut a couple of months back at the Birmingham Boat Show and is just about to nip off to the British Motor Yacht Show in a second, which is why it's currently being worked on a little bit, just to iron out a few details. But it's called the Sea Line S390. And it's a very clever and impressive boat in a lot of ways, as you might expect, because of course, as a sea line, it still uses the design input of Bill Dixon, who has to be, I think, one of my favorite designers of all time. This is apparently called Aquamarine Violet. And I hope you can pick this up. It kind of alters its hue depending on the angle you look at it. But of course, because we have so many angles on this boat, it almost does that for you. It looks fantastic out on the water. And another really key feature of this boat, one which kind of defines the S390 experience before you even step on board is the beam. I mean, look at that beam. This is a 39 foot four boat with a beam of 12 foot eight, that's pretty much a third of its overall length. It's a huge beam. And like, like the Genot DB37 that we saw a few months back in Dusseldorf, it really maximizes its use of that beam by having a hard top that uses stanchions right on the outside. So every single bit of that beam can be used for the internal cockpit. But unlike that Genot, which had huge fat stanchions and a fairly simplistic one dimensional hard top, this has very narrow, stanchions as I'll show you right now. It's because inside these moldings we have nice thick strong steel bars going up into that hard top. It means it could look quite elegant and low profile but still do all sorts of clever things as you can see in a way that the Genot DB37's hard top simply does not. Now as you step forward into this big cockpit of course space is a major plus point and we'll talk about that in a second. But on the way in, we have the transom shower, which makes good sense. What makes less sense, of course, is the fact that we have the shore power on the starboard side. Because of course, this is an asymmetrical layout, an L-shaped seating area. The only point of access to this cockpit is on the starboard side. So why have your shore power over, over here when, of course, the cable for that will get in the way, create a trip hazard on your entry point? Well, the reason for that, according to the guys, is that all the wiring looms are on the starboard side. So that's where the shore power is going to be. Not perfect, but manageable. Now, if we look at the rest of the cockpit, you see there is indeed loads of space. At the moment, on this first boat into the UK, it's not properly used because we only have a two leaf table. And you'll see that the bench goes further forward on the port side than that. So they're going to introduce a three leaf table so that just as the aft section folds down onto its stainless steel braces, there'll be a third forward section that folds down to make better use of that space there. And in the standard package, they're also going to introduce a set of branded director's chairs to make full use of this deck space and make it a little bit more sociable. In truth, it's not the most convertible area you're ever going to see. It's relatively simplistic, but you can fold this backrest aft over this swim platform to extend your sunbathing area. You can also, at the touch of a button, drop this table into that space and use infills to turn this entire aft section into one huge sunbathing area. So that's uh, pretty useful. What I really like here is the fact that we have an integrated sunshade aft. Now, unlike a sunshade that extends aft out of a fixed hard top, that generally you can't really run underway at pace with, where well, you can run as fast as you like with that sunshade extended over that aft space. And we've had to use that a couple of times today. I know it deploys relatively slowly. It's a really useful feature. Use it at 34 knots or use it sitting alongside at your anchorage. Either way, it enables you to tailor the amount of sun and shade you get in this aft section. The engine bay is also very neatly arranged. We've got a ladder in the center here for easy access. And as you can see, we've got the top rated D6380s in here. 
Now, of course, if you had the D4 320s, they'd stop short of that. They're significantly smaller engines uh, and generate extra space for storage. But even as things stand, there's plenty of space for the additional bits and bobs you need. We've got our hot water tank back there. There's a dedicated plinth over there on the port side ahead of that. And that's ideal for your generator. If you want diesel heating, again, lots of space there on the starboard side. And then ahead of all of this, we've got some rather plush Mastervolt electrics plus a 450 litre tank on either side and your batteries down there. So it's very neatly arranged. And though you're unlikely to do your servicing yourself, your engineer will certainly appreciate access like that. And another thing I like about this cockpit is the access to the side decks. And that's kind of a feature that they've inherited from the SC42, upon which this boat is apparently largely based. And you can see why that was a very, very successful model for Sea Line. So let's step up here. We go up two steps. There's a deck drain there, so that you don't fill your cockpit with seawater. And as we step up, these guardrails here are really elevated, very safe feeling. We've also got the edge of the screen that you can hold on to there before you get to the rooftop where there's another rail to lead you forwards. So it really does feel very safe. And when you get to the bow space, this is not just a fairly featureless set of sunbeds under here, as you would tend to get on most boats of this type. What we have is a trough at the forward end, it actually enables you to step down into that space. So you feel relatively safe. I've stood up here underway at sea, taking photographs of this boat, and it's much safer feeling than most boats of this type. And if I just undo these little toggles here at the front end of this cover, now there's plenty of rain about today and they're trying to prep this boat for the British Motor Yacht Show so I can't take the covers right the way off. If I just pull them back, you'll see that we have little backrest here. And that means that you can sit three people on this bench, another couple potentially there with cushions. And although it's tight, it's very intimate, it's a nice little feature. A nice space to sit and have a cup of tea or a glass of wine or just to chat with your kids, particularly if you're moored stern too, so you can get away from the pontoon. I like that a lot. Now let's move back down the port side. As we do so, let's notice these rather beautiful cleats. This is classic sea line. They've always gone for massively over-engineered pieces of uh, steel that you could uh, quite easily put on your coffee table as conversation pieces. Way out of proportion to the size of the boat, I would have thought, but they're rather lovely. I like those a lot. And as we make our way aft and back down into that cockpit, it's also good to see that although the hard top bulges out a little to encompass the full beam aft, it is not particularly a risk in terms of hitting your head. You go down below that level before you actually step in. And either way, there's no right angles. It's quite a smooth, linear sort of um, design. So there's no prospect of knocking yourself out as you try to make your way around this boat. So accessibility all around is very good indeed. And now we're back in the cockpit. Another interesting feature is the way they set up these wet bars. Now, as you can see, we've got a big, wide central companionway it leads you right up onto that slightly elevated helm section and then down into the forward cabins. But I do like the way they've split this wet bar into two. So to starboard, we have a pair of sinks and a work surface with some additional storage trays. We also have additional storage underneath there and a handy grab rail, plus a lot of your switch gear for the tables and for the sunshades and so on. And on the port side, we have a fridge, a good size of fridge in there. You can also spec this boat with an ice maker on this starboard side, plus a barbecue just here, and another little storage space with a work surface. So that's really quite a nice arrangement. It feels very wide and open. And although this boat comes with a, uh, a galley down below as standard, there are no options for these as it stands. So if you're content with the galley down below, you can't just spec these as our facing seats to make this cockpit more sociable. This is how it is. But for most people who will pick this 
boat as much for its day boating credentials as its cruising credentials, this is going to make a lot of sense. Now let's take another step up to this helm station and cast our eyes to the port side. Now here we have elevated mouldings and you know exactly why that's happening because they want to factor in extra space, extra volume down below for that mid cabin. Now quite often you'll see this achieved by means of an elevated sunbed on the port side, but that for me doesn't make any sense at all. Now as I look at this seat, that doesn't appear to me to make a great deal of sense either. It seems kind of trapped halfway between a seat and a sunbed with virtually no uh, dip below the seat level to put your legs. But actually it's a tremendously comfortable place to sit underway. Really secure and you can brace your feet against this angled molding sit your kids up there, get great views, but you're very secure. It's really impressive. I've been surprised by it. And I spent a good 10, 20 minutes sitting in that as we uh, played out on the water. So it's very impressive indeed. I like it a lot. We also get a pair of cup holders up here, plus some more storage drained. And as you'll see, we've got a big uh, glass section on the top there to admit some extra light down below. Plus a similar door so that we can drench this lower lounge in natural light. And let's pop down there right now and take a little look because it's well worth looking at. Now I'll back off to the starboard side and look to port. What we have there is basically uh, a lounge. Uh, we have a table that will dip down into that space with an infill. So you can use that actually as a third berth a third double berth, or um, more commonly, you just arrange it as a chaise long. So you can sit here with your legs up, taking it easy, face across to this TV on that starboard bulkhead. And as you look to the starboard side, we can of course now see that galley in all its glory. And I use that word advisedly because I think it's a really impressive place. What we have here is a gas hob with another opening porthole to get rid of the fumes and the smells and the humidity. That's quite low level, high level's about here, so you can't see anything but the water, but it's well worth having nonetheless. And you can of course spec that as an electric hob instead if you prefer. We've also got an oven down there, plus a good size of fridge with built-in freezer unit and a very attractive sink. We also have some high level storage here. And just as on the port side, this element will be used for storage in the future beneath those side decks. What I really like here though is the fact that in place of a blind or a curtain which gets messed up and is prone to failing, we have this simple slide across partition. Wipe clean, completely blackout too. That makes loads of sense. Really impressed with that. And another thing I quite like in here actually, if we look down, is the fact that we don't have any little ring pulls or handles to open these uh, deck hatches. What we have in fact is this. That's not a gear stick for your galley, that's actually a little plunger. So we hit that down, lift it up, job done. Now of course it looks very clean and tidy and it's relatively cheap and affordable and simple and there's nothing to go wrong except losing these things. So if you buy this boat you'll probably need 20 or 30 of those if you're anything like me to make sure you have access to your under deck spaces. Now on either side of this television above and below we have the distribution panels and here in the heads compartment, although that galley is well worth having and is a decent size, we've still got decent four and a half space for a proper bathroom in here. So we have a sink, again with low level window and porthole, and we have the toilet rather sensibly positioned in the shower to maximise use of that footprint. Now this is of course the day heads as well as the ensuite for the forward cabin. You'll see there's the door to the forward cabin. We'll close that up and we'll go and have a look at the forward cabin right now. And I say that that's a uh, good use of the space in the heads compartment by putting that toilet in the shower because it means you don't have to shorten the bed or shorten the space in here. And this is a very impressive cabin for a boat of this scale. And the first thing you notice is light. I mean, that's fantastic. Really good. That's that little trough that we had our feet in on the foredeck earlier, the little seating area, so that's great. We also have big wraparound windows there. And if you want even more light, just remove those cushions from those foredeck sun pads and the entire space is absolutely drenched in natural light. 
It also helps actually that we have an option here. Now this, I think, is the chestnut option. It's a paler, lighter wood, bounces the light around. The standard option is walnut, and the chestnut costs another five grand. But it's definitely an option worth considering because it feels so bright and modern in here. Now we have storage on both sides, of course. Plenty of that. Additional shelving units there, and more shelving units up around the top there. And there is absolutely loads of space to sit in bed. I mean, look at that. That's fantastic. Even when you're sitting right up in bed, reading your book, I must have a good foot and a bit above my head, all the natural light you could want, all the space you could want as well, because of course, with that relatively plumb out and those relatively vertical hole sides, plus the fact that it brings the beam a long way forward, the bed itself doesn't taper until right up here at the very head end. So it's a proper king size bed. There's loads of space. It feels fantastic. It doesn't feel like a compromise in this cabin in any way at all. And that's what the clever Bill Dixon design of that bathroom and that galley enable. We also have these. These are rather nice. These are little wireless charging trays for your phones. And unlike most units of this kind, they actually look like pieces of furniture. You wouldn't actually guess what they were unless you knew. So that's a very swanky little touch. And we've got good storage too. Hanging storage on both sides, plus additional shelves. So you're not gonna struggle there. And even though this bed is relatively low level, and of course we can achieve that because of that hole shape, we still have a good bit of storage underneath here. If I can find the handle, there we are. Good slide out storage. Further forward, of course, we have the bell thruster and the batteries, so not a lot of use there, but there really is a good bit of storage in this forward cabin. Loads of light, lots of space. It's very impressive indeed. Now let's head aft and see what that port seating does for the volume down below in that mid cabin. And of course, as you can see at the entry point, it does really good things. We've got about seven foot, maybe a bit more than that at the entry point. And although the roof level does drop a little, the multi-tiered setup of that port seating means that we can easily find a little extra space where we don't have to bend down. I close that door back over. You'll see that we also have some proper hanging storage in here too. That's something you wouldn't necessarily expect. What we also have in here though, and this might also come as a surprise, is three beds. Now on the port side, next to again this huge hole window, you can spec this as a storage unit or a seating area. What we have here is the third bed, but of course you still get storage beneath there. So this seems to me to be the most sensible option. Particularly brilliant if you've got a relatively large family or young kids. Additional storage there, and that divides that four and a half bed off from the two transverse beds that sit beneath that cockpit sole. But of course, what I really want to do is jump on this bed and show you the perspective. So I'll get rid of this please do not sit sign and we'll shift ourselves towards the head end. And even as I do so beneath this helm station, there's still plenty of vertical height. I don't have to bail my head to get there. And when we reach the head end, again, there's a cavity up beneath those side decks, more vertical height. Again, another big window for great views and natural light, another mirror to bounce that light around. Another reading lamp is just a very comfortable place to be. So much so that you have to remind yourself this is only a 39 footer. And this is only the second cabin on this boat, not the one the owner would necessarily choose. But of course, that's what Bill Dixon's all about. His forte is spatial management on relatively compact sports boats. And he's doing very good things here with this new Sea Line S390. Now this helm position feels pretty good to me. There's plenty of space here on this bench for a couple of people, a couple of relatively cozy people, but it's uh, pretty serviceable nonetheless. And we also got this little bolster mechanism that enables you to perch yourself up a little bit. I and mean, if you're six footer like me, when you do so, the fiberglass mouldings at the top of the screen do get slightly in your way. But you do also have a fold down uh, platform at the bottom there, so you can elevate yourself, stand right up, look out over the top of those mouldings when you're coming alongside, communicate with people on the pontoon. So that's a very practical touch. And we've also got a little bit of fore and aft adjustment 
on this bench, plus some handy adjustment at the wheel. So it's a very comfortable spot, but I'll pop that bolster down right now. Now we've got a, a fairly simplistic dash. It's not huge, but it's got everything you need. All your various data displays in the right position, directly above the, the wheel there. A little bit of switch gear to the left-hand side. Our tabs are on the left-hand side too, which I don't personally like. We've got space for them over here on the right-hand side next to your throttle. Um, which is where I would relocate them to and uh, it's no problem at all for the guys here to enable that for you. And visibility is of course fantastic. Now you've got a bit of glare on these, uh, this MFD from the overhead sunroof but I'll take that any day because I've seen this boat in action. There's plenty of game heel. It drives like a bit of a sports boat so when you heel around to port if you've got a filled in roof space over your head then you can't really see much on the inside of the turn. So this is a, a really great solution for that. And we do have options, of course, for these windows. I mean, if you have this filled in all the way, then you can have as an option uh, an opening window here so you can communicate with people on the pontoon that way. But it feels good. It's very, uh, very comfortable. It's quite sociable. There's plenty of adjustability and really good visibility. So let's pop her on single lever, trim her in, get her up and underway and see how she actually performs. Now we do have options with this boat in terms of the engines. You can go for the twin D4 320s, uh, which apparently should be good for between sort of 27 and 30 knots, although they talk about a little bit more than that um, through their experiences with the C390. Or you can have this the top end. We've got a pair of D6 380s, which gives us round about 34 knots at the top end. Now let's get her up to speed and see how we do. Why, oh, there's plenty of surge there as you come past two and a half thousand RPM. A little bit of bow lift. Give her a little bit more trim. She settles right down. And here at 30 knots, well, at 30 knots, she feels quite efficient. And as I look at the information on the gauges, that's very much backed up. We're seeing about 120 litres disappearing from our fuel tanks. Four litres per nautical mile. That's very serviceable for a boat of this scale. And actually, we've had a little play with her this morning. And at everything between 20 and 30 knots, that remains pretty much unchanged. Four litres per nautical mile. So that's a really handy cruising band. And while, of course, it does go a bit south towards the top end, around about 34 and a half knots, we're well, always going to expect that. Let's trim her back in. Put a few more revs on and heel around to port. Look at that heel. Oh, that is fun. And I've got a vast open view through this sunroof. I don't have to stoop to see what I'm looking at on the inside of that arc. It's so easy. And it, you can play at relatively low speeds as well. 17, 18 knots, no problem. You can actually feel her skimming across the waves. The, the nose is relatively level. We're not pointing skyward. We've descended off our hump. The ride softer seems decent too. Let's lean her over to starboard and take a little turn that way. And you'll see we're basically looking right down at the sea here. If you're into your driving, that's just a very satisfying thing. It's nice to feel those G-forces. It's nice to feel pressed into your seat rather than shifted sideways on it. Of course, these D6 380s, just going through our own weight here a little bit, the D6 380s, they do add about 100 kilo each, so a couple of hundred kilos to the back end of the boat. But this boat seems very deserving of it. I can't help feeling it would be a little bit underpowered with a pair of 320s. In all regards, as I sit here with these particular options, that as standard, that big sunroof, and this kind of half glass along the sides, I'm getting loads of openness, loads of visibility, loads of capacity to reach people on the pontoon, chat to people, but at the same time, I'm entirely protected in this position. In pretty much every regard then, this new Sea Line S390 is a very cool boat. Now, of course, if you need an extra cabin or an extra heads compartment, you need to look towards the C390. 
which incidentally is also available with outboard engines, which is something the SV90 is not. Now as a CV90, you also get that coupe structure to give you shelter from the elements for year round boating. But if you want a sexy sports boat that behaves like a proper sports boat, that gives you really decent day boating facilities, but can also accommodate you for a week away with your family, then notwithstanding its slightly simplistic cockpit layout, this new SV90 does a really fantastic job. 